I, I'm convinced Eli doesn't know what a rate is. I don't is. know what fucking I also anything don't know what a rate is. is so Not yes. a god. I am so there for you. You are a near and dear person in my life and heart, and I want nothing but the best for you, but gun to my head, I'm like, everyone watch my friend, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever that is, sometimes Amazon Prime gives you money. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Hey, if you have Amazon Prime, use it to order one kip. I don't know. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema or the heavens shall fall to the earth. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. We got an accidental comedy. I'm so Didn't fucking we, excited. Though? I love these. <laughs> Just from the special effects alone. Oh. And of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Oh, let me just uh, tie up my human suit here. I am ready to go. All right. Awesome. And we're pleased to welcome a new guest masochist who knew what they were getting into and got into it anyway. Kip Tid is a monster-loving Twitch streamer who will turn any video game into a dating simulator. And is also a pastor's kid, so I'm sure dad loves this career move. Kip. Welcome to God Awful Movies. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You know, if I still talk to my parents, I think they would have so many just wonderful things to say about having a queer non-binary kid with a performing arts degree. Yeah. Just <laughs> glowing with pride. Every, every pastor's dream, yes. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Stitches. It's, I think, the training video they show in hell for <laughs> demons to learn all the technicalities that might trip you up. <laughs> And you're negotiating a deal. <laughs> oh my God, it is. It right? is. Okay. It's the dark art of the deal. Yeah. That's what we watched. <laughs> we talk about like crazy billionaire remakes. For the $3 it would cost us to the rights to this movie, we just pause it and have someone in devil makeup walk out and be like, now what did Lilith do? Bob? Yeah, right. <laughs> well. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the one-by-one -one creature features of the late 70s and early 80s, but you wish it was from a boring middle manager demon perspective, you will love this movie. This movie, which, by the way, I, as near as I can tell, was made in 2001. 2001. It looks like it's from 1957. This is the worst <laughs> thing that happened in 2001. Yes. We've said this before. <laughs> Hands down. This might be the winner. I spent this entire movie being like, man, old timey movies. And then 20 seconds before the end of the movie, I was like, when was this made? And I was like, oh no. <laughs> I, I was like checking the ages of the actors. I'm like, that can't be right. This person must have died in 1979. But no. No, and Kip, you actually chose this movie for us, if I'm not mistaken. So... I, how the hell did it happen that you were even aware of this glorious piece of shit? <laughs> well, you know, I was feeling a little bit nostalgic. And, and when I saw the premise of demon wears an old lady's skin to fuck with people, my mind was just teleported back to Thanksgiving at Grandma's. <laughs> so obviously I needed to force you three to watch it with me. Oh, awesome. I know how Kara feels a little bit now. <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best and the worst at? Best Worst Minions. They yes. have minions, and they're going to be made of paper. There are paper dolls. This is a paper-themed demon at the center of this movie. That are the minions of Satan. And you're probably thinking like, okay, how is the movie going to like do a, a fight with paper dolls? Just you wait. They <laughs> will do that. We're going to talk about it. I really need their, their origin story. Right? Yes. <laughs> right. Part two is going to be awesome. So, or well, I guess the prequel part minus one. Stitches two, stitched. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst atheist. You know, we've had a <laughs> lot of bad atheists in this. Well, okay. All right. Wait, no. I Second best worst after let there be light after uh, yeah, the, the yeah, no, world's number one ranked atheist. So the second best worst atheist, the atheist in this movie is just awesome. The way that they decided to show that this character was, was atheist is just chef's kiss. This is why Matt Powell thinks he can make the documentaries he can. He's pretty sure we're all the atheists in the movie. Yeah. And I'm going to go with best worst sins, right? So for those of you who are used to sort of like creature features one by one, right? Horror cinema. This is a very classic trope, right? Everyone commits some kind of metaphorical sin and then the monster kills them. 
by the end of this movie, the sins might as well be, okay, so you didn't technically litter, but you know, <laughs> recycling is supposed to be set. You do two different bins in your town. You have to remove the label from the bottle. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. The trash. <laughs> Food residue means it ends up in the landfill just Ugh. as much. You go to hell now. <laughs> I thought they sorted those either at the garbage too. I thought it would, they don't. <laughs> Isn't that part of the video? I would say best worst prequel film for Doja Cat's Demons music video. <laughs> I had just watched that music video like the day before and I watched this. I had to go back to the Demons music video and I was like, Are, this is the same universe. <laughs> this is the same house. It's the same the universe. Ooh, universe. Uh-huh. Interesting. What happens at the end of that video? Well, okay. So that video, it's a house that was for sale. And Doja is like a demon coming in and like messing with the family. And I was like, oh my God, this is where the house got like marked. Oh shit. Okay. To be like a possessed house. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Doja was right. like, I got these paper dolls. Got you em. cannot change our minds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, well, this is a horror movie, so I'm going to give everybody a minute to turn down the lights and fire up some candles or whatever. But then we'll be back with all the glorious special effects of Stitches. I'm telling you, Kip, you got to get an aura frame for Mother's Day. Oh, Heath, uh, Kip's mom sucks. Oh, it's true. She does. Oh. Well, you could still get her an aura frame. Uh, I can? Yeah, the Aura Frame is the world's best digital picture frame. It has unlimited storage and an easy-to-use app. You can even set it up while it's in the box, so all mom has to do is open it up and plug it in. I mean, that sounds great, but what would I? why would I get her that? Well, they don't have to be nice photos. Ooh, that's true. You could do huh. one of you, like, flipping her the bird. Ooh. Yeah, and the little message you get to select when they plug it in could be like, hey, you suck. Exactly. Right now, Aura has a great Mother's Day deal. Listeners can save on the perfect gift by visiting AuraFrames.com to get $30 off plus free shipping on their best-selling frame. That's A-U-R-A Frames.com. Use the code AWFUL at checkout to save. Terms and conditions apply. Aura Frames. You can put whatever you want in those pictures. Heck yeah, you can. Demons to me! Yes, Uh, master. I have another challenge for you, Lilith. Ooh, another house of souls to corrupt. Indeed. And what a sinful bunch they are. There's an atheist. A non-believer. Ha! <laughs> yes, and an abuser and cheat. Ha, tut, tut. Mm-hmm. Also, there's a lady who doesn't use the bank. Sorry, what? Uh, is she uh, keeps all her money at her house. And, and that's a, a sin? Y- yes. Because, like, she's losing money to, to inflation? To inflation, sure. That's, uh, um, yeah, that's it, bad. Is there anyone else at the house? Oh, yeah. No, there is. Oh, yeah. There's also the abuser's victim and a girl who can't read. Ooh, right. What are their sins? They, they, I, just said, I just said it. Right. Uh, Satan, question? Yeah, no. Open book. This... Doesn't feel quite like our usual group of victims. Sorry, abuse victim? Is that okay, what you said? Okay, I'm going to be up front with you all. I had a different house planned, but I think I can make one of those guys a Supreme Court justice. So we're doing next door instead. Oh, got it. So last minute switch. Last minute switch. Got it. Mm. Exactly. Abuse victim. Stop saying it back, man. I'm, I'm just clarifying. That's what you said? And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on a 16-bit logo, which is promising, (laughs) right? First thing I wrote down was spooky pixels. I can't really see. (laughs) Spooky pixel? Yeah. Cool. I literally paused to make sure I hadn't switched the, like, resolution by accident. Right, yeah, yeah. This is where I discovered (laughs) that this movie streams at 363p, a number I had not seen as an option before. (laughs) You you actually can't appreciate this movie unless you watch it on dial-up. It's actually good. It has a warmer tone. (laughs) Truly. I wrote my notes. Okay, so I'll just spend the entire film thinking I need to put my glasses on. That's right, okay. Yeah, That's right. Okay. No, I, I wrote in my notes, credits note. What if we just used all the effects at once? <laughs> <laughs> See, I said the post-production team had a promo deal for like 10 free clip art downloads with like yeah. a two-week trial. <laughs> and they were like, oh, this is going to slap so hard. Don't worry. We have all the visuals we need for the entire film. Okay, yeah. your kid has Mario Paint. We get it. Just finish the <laughs> intro. It's so long. Well, and the musician is like, well, hey, 
good news, guys. I know the musical equivalent of using all the effects on Mario Paint at the same time. Yeah, right. <laughs> so exactly. I'm going to do that. I love that the intro ends with a Wilhelm scream, but it's like not really. It gets muffled. It's like Wilhelm starts screaming and everybody just leaves the room and he gets ignored. He's always doing that. <laughs> it's the best. So, okay. So, so the credits end and we resolve on a horned demon at a sewing machine in a room full of dangling corpses. The sewing machine seems out of place there to me. Yeah. This implies that demons have to make their own costumes. I feel like that's going to result in a lot of problems. Right. Yeah. He's sewing together an old lady costume. Wouldn't they have a sweatshop most likely in hell? Yeah. You'd think. You'd think you could get somebody to do the work for you. Sure. <laughs> But what you but what y'all don't understand is that this is actually just footage of RuPaul getting in drag on her fracking ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now we're in a feud with RuPaul, Kip. You're welcome. Yeah, I love RuPaul, but yeah, that is that is a fracking ranch. <laughs> so I love too the, the demon holds up this this old lady suit, and you can see that the there's like a dress attached to fake hands, like a cheap doll. Or whatever. So we get the demon trying on the dress, but we see, of course, most of this through shadow because they're not about to try that effect. Okay, but mm. they did it weird. So my experience was a demon being like, okay, skin suit is going great. You know what? I'm going to take a shadow puppet break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's enough. It's a doggy. So back, back to the skin suit. But they did take the time with hair and makeup to put like super long nails on this demon and then show that the hands of the old woman we're very short. Yes. And so I, the entire time I was like, that's going to rip. That's going to rip. That's going <laughs> to rip. <Right. laughs> no, no ripping. Got it. Cool. Well, and the demon has horns too, right? And he just puts the uh, the mask over top of his horns and the horns are gone too. I think they so, just, uh -huh. they fold down, right? Oh, sure. Sure. Right. Oh, are they inflatable? Like those Halloween Ooh. costumes? <laughs> or maybe or they're a talk, taped maybe? back. <gasps> yeah, exactly. Talk? Right. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. it is RuPaul. <laughs> has to, has to talk multiple things. This is all coming together. <laughs> This isn't a feud. This is an expose. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> All right. But the demon is now in an old lady costume. Then we cut to this boarding house late at night with this old lady showing up. We cut inside and there's just all the people that live there are just hanging out in the living room for a minute. And the opening line, the first spoken words of the movie are this guy, Sam, saying, well, of course, nobody really believes in the old devil of the Middle Ages with horns and a pitchfork. I think we can all agree we're not in a scary movie right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are all atheists. The only way we would ever stop doing that is if we end up being in a scary movie with a skin suit demon. But that is not what's happening. Yeah, we are all hardcore atheists on this podcast. If I said that out loud at Matreon, Heath would be like, hey, man, you're going to get a scary movie. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a demon now. With a skin you're suit. jinxing it. Right. So we pan over this just incredibly boring group of people. Robert and Ellen, a married couple, are playing gin as though they've been sentenced to do so. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I, the, the only way I could describe the like costumes and hair choices in this movie is, you know, when children in a school play are dressed up as adults. Mm -hmm, yeah. Right. And so they've got these like weird wigs on and these weird <laughs> old timey clothes. And you're like, all right, elementary school performance of the miracle worker. Weird choice. <laughs> it's that. But on adults, on full <laughs> yes. grown adults. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's adults playing adult. Yeah. So and then there's a there's a knock on the door. Helen Heller. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Took me so long. I was scouting. <laughs> no, no, you're there. You did it. Yeah. That's, that's what matters. He's a miracle worker. So, but they're having this like theological discussion of whether or not the devil is real. And just then there's like, a, you know, the speak of the devil moment. There's a ring on the doorbell. And I just, you have to wonder how long she had been standing outside waiting for someone to say the words, well, demons clearly don't exist before <laughs> she rang the doorbell. That's my cue. Still Perfect. the weather. Still the weather. Also, I have to say that th this like casual discussion of demon existence, one, the pacing was awful. Two, it was absolutely giving like Hampton's 2020 quarantine party mm. of, like, <laughs> of like discussing the philosophical implications of Black Lives Matter <laughs> with like a room full of like well-to-do white people. Oh yeah, no, everyone in this room refers to their living room as the parlor. Yeah, this yeah. they're awful. The sitting room. Yeah, right. I'm immediately rooting for demons the whole time. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Not a single sympathetic face in the room for sure. Right. 
So, and we established, so Mary is the landlady here. Mary owns the house and Catherine is her niece and she's like real bitchy and rude to her niece constantly. Okay, right? I yeah. almost had best worst. Catherine, get out of the fucking movie. You're the worst. We it's hate so you. <laughs> That's the whole movie. Not since Tina mm -hmm. was so reviled in Leap too that we found a character <laughs> so unwelcome on, on screen. Oh, Leap 3 is coming. And it's just a room full of fully grown adults letting this woman abuse this child. Yeah, yeah, right. Nobody says a fucking <laughs> right. word. So, but Mary goes to get the door. She's like, oh, where's that piece of shit, useless fucking niece of mine, Catherine? Oh, we all hate her. I'll get the fucking door. So this is where the old lady comes in. The old lady who introduces herself as Lucy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Lucy, Lucy Albright. Yes, Albright. Albright. Yes. Okay. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a demon. Yeah. Yes. Oh, to be clear, though, I think Lucy's not Lucifer, right? Lucy's a demon, like a demon, right. like yeah, a lower yeah, a level. Lesser, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So the demons all name themselves really close to Lucifer, but not quite. As, an, as like an homage. To That's the they love a good pun down in hell. Yeah. You know? okay. <laughs> I think of it more like those parents who name all of their kids, like everything starts with a letter A or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Like they all start with L. That there is you go. hell. Well, and honestly, <laughs> given what we've seen in Christian movies, I admire the writer's restraint for not calling her Lucy DeVille. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. So so she comes in and they're like, and Mary's like, oh, this is this is Lucy. She's gonna be staying with us for a while. Opening question as she settles in, Sam turns to her and she and he's like, Hey, so Lucy, um, what's your opinion on the devil? Yay or nay? Is is that, is that a guy? <laughs> Yeah, and her response is, ah, oh, he's a terrible co-worker. Yeah. <laughs> Super obnoxious. Always Eats performing. Like you can't just have a regular conversation <laughs> just in a, in a swoosh of a doodle. You get lost. It's impossible to talk to this person. He's always doing a bit. <laughs> just talk. And also, like, as they're introducing the cast for us, you cannot tell me that Mr. Reynolds and Robert are not fucking. Like, oh, they're 100%. They're fucking, right? Absolutely. Okay, th Here's what happened. Those actors were fucking, right? <laughs> right. And they were like open mouth kissing before the actor before the director called action, right? And then they like decided to do a fun one and they were like, "No, seriously, let's do a serious one." And he was like, "No, guys, remember I have this VHS recorder from 40 years ago. It's 2001. I can't go backwards on this or I'll delete my parents' wedding videos." <laughs> We still got a little cum before we start. It's so, like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, just get a little. There you go. So, Catherine comes in and Mary berates her for not getting the door earlier. And while she's doing that, Lucy, the demon old lady, is just openly sewing a voodoo doll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I genuinely ask a question? Because I Googled this. Are paper dolls sewn up like that? They sure are. I don't aren't. think so. I've never heard of that. There was no articulation on these dolls. They are like singular pieces of paper. And so she's just doing like a blanket stitch around the edge for fun. Like, what are you like? What are you trying to do here? So I, I, I hate because I don't have a, a bit for this or whatever, but this, I believe, is a depression era thing that was done. They would just take two pieces of paper and put a little stuffing in the middle and call it a doll. And I and, and like it came from that. This is not funny. This there thing. was no stuffing in there. No, no, it no, it's no just it, like yeah. I'm making South Park or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and she's like, oh, this? No, this is just my doll with no face. And they're like, what? That's, are you foreshadowing right now? What are you doing? Yeah. No. Right, right. No. And the way she says, I have many friends in Boston. <laughs> like, please just call him a slur, ma'am. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Please. You know the funky bunch? I have a bunch of friends there. <laughs> See, now, I thought it was going to be amazing if we got a Boston demon halfway through the movie, just a Bill Burr type kicks in. And oh, goes, hey, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Yo, Lilith, you were supposed to get these souls like 24 minutes ago. Fuck. <laughs> got a big wet Dunkin' Donuts cup he's been chewing on the whole time. I'm a fucking demon. I love to, because like Sam is going to be damned if anyone will change the subject away from the realness of Satan. So every time somebody tries to say anything, he's like, yeah, but back to this whole does Satan exist thing. And finally, like uh, Mr. Reynolds, the other half of Robert's couple, points out that everything in the Bible is, you know, demonstrably false and nothing like that has ever been observed in the real world. So Lucy says, oh, you know, you doth protest too much. I think you really actually want to believe in religion and shit. Okay, I need somebody to be like, 
guys, she's clearly a demon, right? Like she's she's so a demon. A demon. We're, in, oh, yeah. we're in the movie that we said we weren't. <laughs> we in. were speaking of the devil. I'm and- pulling off the skin mask. She has a skin mask. <laughs> this is a demon. And they're all like, no. See, now, if I were the demon in this situation, I'd be freaked out that they all like saw me putting on my skin suit outside and now they were fucking with me. <laughs> right, yeah. Because right? if I g- got in and they just immediately start talking about it, it's like, you guys can tell me if you know. This is where you're making it weird. Does my suit not fit? Because it's... <laughs> Bill Burr, did they catch me on the way in? Did they see me? <laughs> oh, they fucking saw you. Ah, right. uh, shit. I'm going to go start a fight with a minority. Yeah. <laughs> your stand-up's better than your podcast. <laughs> it's because that's what I really think. <laughs> <laughs> the way What's-His-Name says, oh, I'll call you Lucy Plenty. I was like, okay, she's been made. Like, this is the part where you run for the door, girl. Yeah. Right. right. So, yeah, but ultimately she she turns to the atheist kid and she goes, you know, the devil's greatest power is to make people do what they secretly want to do. And I'm like, wow, it's weird how he's like the thing that Satan is good at is is a thing that like something that doesn't exist would also be good at. Right. <laughs> yeah. so that's so fucking weird. <laughs> Lucky for her, no one in this room was like, hey, how come you know what the greatest devil's greatest power is? <laughs> oh, fuck. So, Shit. Also, you said it's the linearity of the time dimension. That's the devil's power. It's yeah, where time he goes. Yeah. He get, that's where it gets you. So, okay. So then we get Lucy settling into her room. This is where we find out that she has telekinesis. She uses her telekinesis to scooch the chair forward. This is the only thing she will ever use her yes, telekinesis thank you. Doesn't it seem like you'd use that for other stuff? <laughs> Even just minor stuff beyond one chair ever? You'd think. It's also one of the only times in the entire film where she waves her hand in the correct direction for the object to move. Right. 90% <laughs> of the time, she she waves her hand in the, in the opposite direction that the thing moves. And I'm like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> you know. They did not tell her what was going to happen with the special effects in this movie at any yeah. point. I imagine this was someone's grandma and they were like, we're making a horror movie and she was like, well, no scariness and no blood. And they were like, oh, okay, we can add it after and shots where you're not there. And she was like, all right, but then I won't watch it. And they were like, okay. <laughs> okay, but again, like I have to point out the brilliance of this movie, right? Because this would just be a bad, scary movie if we didn't every, I don't know, three or four scenes watch the demon with her fucking pants off, right? Being like, ah, fucking, what do I do? Okay, there it is. <laughs> ah, right, right, you know, picking her nose when no one's watching. <laughs> like it's so fucking behind the scenes. Right, so wait, and we're, we're like, so she she like sits in her telekinesis chair. She looks through her book of screams. Right, she's rooting through this book, and like every page screams at her. I mean, honestly, looking at family memory books, I make the same exact sounds. So <laughs> I, I understand where she's coming from. Yeah, no, fair, fair. So yeah, so and and of course we we're all like, wouldn't the people in the next room hear all those screams? But we're don't worry, the movie's going to deal with that in a bit. <laughs> She pulls out a few more voodoo dolls. It looks like she's got one for everyone in the house. And she then she casts her magic spell. I've written down her magic spell here. It, here here's hoping I don't accidentally summon any demons when I say this aloud. But her spell is brown impede, brown impede, which sounds like constipation, constipation to me. Start. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Quickly bring what I need. Okay, now, let me be bold and radically vulnerable and say... This is what I think happens there. So, spoiler alert, there will be a different demon at the end of the movie named Gray. Okay? Mm -hmm. I think that imp was originally named Mr. Brown, (laughs) and she is saying, Brown Imp Heed. Okay, all right. That actually does make sense with the right? It makes more sense than the... It makes a lot more sense than what the (laughs) subtitles were telling me, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but this this calls forth a crumpled up piece of paper sidekick of hers. Yeah. Right. So this crumpled up piece of paper quivers over to her, opens up. We see that it has a face on the inside and then it runs off. And that face is giving 100% Steve Odekirk thumbs movies with like the superimposed faces on thumbs. Oh, yes. 100%. Yeah, right, right. Yes. yes. This is stick stickly the horror movie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, and then she magics her mirror, too. So what we're going to find out eventually is that the crumbled up piece of paper is like a camera. The mirror is the receiver. So it's running around seeing shit for her. 
It's Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Right. So so now we're going to watch as it goes and checks in on all the various characters in the movie, starting with Mary the Landlord, who goes into a room and she puts a big wad of money in her big wad of money drawer. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to establish everybody's sin. So we have her like stare longingly at, their, at her money. Like she, she wants to dive into the drawer Scrooge McDuck style. <laughs> <laughs> and I have so many questions about that drawer. Like, okay, I get that it's a secret drawer. But you have to open it with a straight razor right. every time you want to make you it. Do. Like, it's your dra- it's your house. <laughs> right. Get yes. something with a lock and key. Yeah, a yes, safe. Right. A yeah. safe would be great. Yeah. Get facial recognition or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Nobody has anything flat and sharp. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and then we cut over to Catherine's room. Catherine is trying to learn to read. She's like, it, like, in her 20s, I guess, but she's illiterate and she's trying to teach herself to read at night. That will be her sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get there. Sin game gets weak real fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. But then we cut to Robert and Ellen, the married couple, and he's berating her. He's like obviously an abusive piece of shit of a character. And the scene is super in- intense, except that the character is dressed. I have it down like as a toothpaste clown. Yep. I genuinely could not even think of how to describe this. Right. So I just I just stopped trying. Toothpaste clown is pretty good. <laughs> Toothpaste clown is pretty great. Yeah. It also not helped by the fact that he tries to huffily get into a bed made entirely of doilies at the end of his abuse monologue. It's it's so fucking funny. He's wearing this big green, like mint green and white striped nightshirt with poofy buttons down the front big Mm -hmm. poofy buttons and he's getting into this bed full of decorative pillows all angrily and they're like take us very seriously this is a very serious this is a very serious scene (laughs) she is in danger i'm ebenezer scrooge and i prefer (laughs) colgate It is absolutely an Ebenezer Scrooge outfit from like a local production of christmas carol yeah 100 percent yep and let me say look this actor, and I'm not here to judge anybody's sexual orientation, but this actor was doing his best to portray a straight man. Maybe he is a straight man. I'm not here to say. I'm not here to judge anybody for what they do. But I will say that performance not helped by the fact that this abuse monologue is about her handing him the wrong cufflinks on the wrong day of the week. <laughs> Literally, it felt like he was three seconds from like coming out of the closet at any, like yes. any point in, yes. in, in that monologue. I thought it was going to be his sin. <laughs> and also like, it took me hearing you say that he was arguing about cufflinks to understand that he was talking about cufflinks. Yeah, I could I, not I, understand I'm with you. what it was about. Yeah, I had no idea. No fucking clue. Also, so this wad of paper demon is is going room to room as we're seeing this, and we keep cutting to it. It's like asthmatic, right? It's always just <laughs> like also it's real crumpled heavy. paper trying to sneak. Yeah, so constantly yes. it would be like <laughs> shit. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. It's just a ter- terrible for the job. Just holds up a newspaper over himself. <laughs> <laughs> I also really just wanted Robert to yell, I married a child just a little bit louder because that's his big insult to his wife. Right. It's just like, I married. I, I'm like, yes, please. I don't think that the local precinct heard you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And then, but so then the crumbled piece of paper goes and checks on Sam. Sam was the person who was arguing that there was indeed a medieval devil earlier. He's in his bed reading his Bible, right? And, and we even cut to the demon going like, all right, yeah, we're not going to get anything from this. Ah, oh, this guy's going to be a real bitch, yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> he's, just, he's just reading a Bible. Should I uh, Should I do like a sex thing with my crumpled up piece of paper body? <laughs> jerk off! No, okay, jerk no, no, I'll just, I'll just move on. Got it, okay. Did you hear someone say jerk off? I heard someone say jerk off. <laughs> so- Honestly, the, the crumpled paper should have just replaced the photo of his wife in the in the portrait frame and then like got the guy on like adultery or unfaithfulness or something oh, when it goes to like yeah. kiss the paper. Yes. Right. Or, or just, you know, <laughs> if, if, if you if he looks at a woman with lust, that's enough. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right after this, they show the crumbled up paper sneaking under the covers of a bed. Mm -hmm. It turns out it was a different room, but I thought it was still this guy who had been reading the Bible. So I was like, what is happening? Would that count as you got him (laughs) if a crumbled up piece of paper like rolled in there and touched his penis and then like that? (laughs) that (laughs) No, my crumbled up piece of paper rolled in there and sucked your dick. You have to go. (laughs) It was a guy paper. So weird. 
Well, and speaking of which, the the bed that it's in is Miss Lester, right? She's a school teacher that also lives there. Miss Lester, like we see her, I guess she's got a gun under her pillow, right? Good old America. Yeah, yeah, right. Obviously, I didn't know what it was, but like she checks the device under her pillow and then turns off the light. And I'm just expecting a <laughs> sound or something like that. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I know her sin, but no, that's not that's not it. And then we we cut to finally the atheist guy from before. <laughs> Mr. Boston. I laughed so hard at this scene. It's so good. (laughs) Because the writer was like, all right, well, what would an atheist probably do as they go to sleep? Probably recite arguments against God out loud to themselves. Certainly what I do at night. (laughs) Yeah, they cut to Mr. Reynolds. He's like on a Zoom call with Matt Dillahunty being like, okay, so (laughs) I want to debunk the Kalam cosmological argument. How am I doing that when I argue at my B&B tomorrow with people? (laughs) I'm going to start a, a, a new app to help you get to sleep better. Like, forget about counting sheep. Just listen to people monologue about the existence of God. Right, yeah. yeah. Keep critical right. thinking. You'll fall asleep instantly. <laughs> so, okay. So now it's it's late that night. We see Lucy. She goes out to the porch. Apparently, a couple of tall demons in top hats have arrived with suitcases for her. I was so excited when they showed up. I was like, can I summon tall, dark, and mysterious men to bring these packages? <laughs> right? With top hats? They seem pretty cool. Yes. And they just deliver, like, on the spot, like, real fast. And they bow to her. It was yeah. very respectful. Instacart, she ordered. <laughs> <laughs> but think about the, the ontological, right, the philosophical implications of this, of hell having bellboys, right? <laughs> because that means that either... There are fallen angels, right, who soared down into the depths of hell when Satan arose and he was like, great, you guys will just take care of bags when it right, comes yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> or there are people damned to hell and while Hitler's getting a pineapple up his ass, they were like, you will carry the luggage. I'm like, oh, really? That's not too bad. Yeah. So, but then she gets her luggage and then she knocks on the atheist guy's door. She wakes him up. We've established that he's got to get up early to go to Boston the next day, right? She doesn't tip, by the way. Which no, I found. She, no, oh, you're right. Mm. Truly evil. So she's like, hey, you know, they just dropped off my luggage, these two tall demons in, in top hats. And I, I, you know, I'm an old lady. I can't get it upstairs to my room. Can you do it? And I'm like, wow, this is really easy because you just say no and then go back to bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he agrees to help her with her fucking boxes of anvils. So we get him carrying all the stuff up. And as he's like putting it in her room, he goes to leave. She goes, Mr. Reynolds, what would you give to know? All right, I'm going to take off. That's yeah. not enough for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> can you imagine you've got this early trip? You've just carried six bags up for a rando. And now she's trying to sell you Jesus shit after you just said you needed to get a bed. Yeah. So he's trying to leave. She's trying to get him to make a deal. She will tell him, sure, she will prove to him whether or not there's a God if he agrees to give her anything she wants. But it's set up like the start of every porn. Well, not every porn, but 90% of porn that I've seen. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you want to know if demons are real? I'll fuck you until, you, until you're seeing God in every other other world. <laughs> <man. Right. laughs> exactly. Well, and he follows along with it. She's like, come undo the back of my dress. And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, no, it's not anything improper. And he's like, well, okay, if you say it's not anything improper, I'll take your clothes off. <laughs> it's just a normal non-sexual thing under your dress that you want me to yes, take off. Right, right. Uh-huh. So yeah, no, this guy really needs to learn to say no, but he takes her dress off and you can see that her skin suit is just sewed together in the back, like with a big open gap, like, like she hadn't worn it since high school and it doesn't fit as well as she remembered it fitting. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. If your whole shtick as a demon is sewing and like your sewing machine and your little like paper sewn dolls, whatever. Right. Your seamstress skills need some work. Right? If this is how <laughs> your masterpiece is fitting. Right. Like, come on. Yeah. Also, use your telekinesis to take it off. If you want to take it there off, you go. Right? Yeah, obviously. And if you want to prove to this guy that like magic is real and demons float something, I don't know, do anything else. This is so much easier. Is so, so involved. Well, what I love is that this atheist, after he like undoes her dress and he sees that she it's just a demon wearing a skin suit because you can see the demon skin under it. She's like, now take off the stitches of my 
skin suit and he's like well okay i guess well i'm at it no you don't mm, why would you fucking do that now? <laughs> <laughs> no I, how amazing would this scene be if he had just been like no i got it i saw it. you're a demon <laughs> Under, you thought i was gonna be like burn victims yes the real proof of the devils <laughs> So, oh, and we should point out at this point that she has put a leaf on the door that it magically keeps all the sound inside the room. So now, no matter how loud he screams, no one will hear. Right. I love to think that she just has like a little pocket full of petals just ready to go. <laughs> yeah. And she's like fumbling for some like change if she ever tipped a bellboy or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, oh, sorry, all my pedals. Oh, no, you can't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, that's why she probably stopped tipping. Ah, you know? shit, just... the, by the inside of the earth is completely silent now. I don't know what that's <laughs> going to affect. I had a handful of kicks. So, <laughs> fell out. <laughs> so, yeah, but so she takes off her s suit long enough to show that it, that she is indeed a demon. Again, we see this in, in shadow because that demon makeup was very expensive, took way longer than we thought. We can only show it once. Yeah, right. Yeah. And Henry was not happy once he was in it. He was very angry at us. <laughs> so, yeah, but but she's like, and you agreed to give me anything. So now you belong to the devil. And we get perhaps the greatest special effect in the movie. But before that special effect, she tells him to crawl oh, across does. the floor. She's like, come here. And then she's like, no, crawl. And I'm like, okay, so sex is still on the table. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <Right. laughs> But when he gets there, she grabs his finger and she stretches it into the sewing machine and then turns him into thread. Right. And maybe you're thinking of like some grotesque practical special effect that, you know, you see his skin unraveling from the muscle and bone. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry. The glob go glab glab pounces <laughs> off of his finger. <laughs> Fucking my niece's first time on Photoshop extends from his finger and they're like, yep. Flesh-colored blob. That oh. is thread now. <laughs> and then we see his face, and you can see his face being pulled down with just... They're just bending the fucking graphic or whatever. It's so ridiculous. They watched Face Off, and then they were like, oh, I got an idea. I got an idea. Yeah, right, there. right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but, but she's going to pull his whole body through his finger until he's fucking spooled to death. Which for the premise of this film is so confusing because they set it up like, like, oh, she's going to want to wear him like the old lady suit and like stitch herself up into it. Yeah. No, she just wants some like flesh thread. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You have no idea how expensive yarn is since I got into <laughs> dry dye. This is really... All right, well, now that all us atheists know what we got coming to us, I suppose we should pause to give everybody a chance to repent. It would be only fair, but we'll be back in a minute with even more Stitches. And so I don't know if we'll get a chance to get a raid going this weekend. Got to see what's going on. Thanks for the love, Foodle Doodle 42. Welcome to the Boz Squad. <sighs> Eli, what are you doing? And how do we make it stop right now? Uh, Kip inspired me. I am also a Twitch streamer now. God. Well, I would be if my phone would work. Dang it. Data problems again? Yeah. I mean, I pay so much, but I've got terrible signal. Well, why don't you try Mint Mobile? Oh, what's... What's Mint Mobile? No, no, absolutely no, not. That, what? That's, a, no, that's illegal to steal. It's 1.75 seconds. Just show me the stopwatch. Are we still doing the ad? Yeah, you're good. This is a different thing. Checking the watch, though. Okay, cool. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans starting at 15 bucks a month. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. I don't know, Kip. Do I have to switch phones? Nope. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's limited time deal and get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month. All right, Kip. I'm sold. Where do I sign up? To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. All right, you hear that, Boz Squad? We're back on. Oh, please don't call them Boz Squad. Boz House. Worse. Oh. And so I said, can we get something besides a pitchfork, like a scimitar maybe? Oh, well, how, how'd he take that? 
not well. Blah, blah, blah. Company branding. You know the drill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. I am ready to go to the circus. <laughs> Dude, Beelzebub, what the hell are you wearing? One, one second. One second. Ah. It's my skin suit. I'm a, I'm a human. You sure aren't, man. No. Look no. at the stitches. What did you do? It, it doesn't look good. <laughs> no. No. It, man, it looks awful. Okay, well, if I'm being honest, I was not expecting sewing to be quite such a big part of my job as a demon. I think it's inside. Is it inside out? It's totally inside out. Yes. Okay, wait, let me get it. Let me get it. Okay. Is this better? Dude, is that Alan Rickman? Right? Alan Rickman. What do you mean, right? Everyone loves Alan Rickman. He's been dead for a while, dude. No, Professor Snape? Yeah, man. I feel like he'd prefer a Die Hard reference, but yeah. So, so, wait, you're saying I shouldn't go to Earth as Alan Rickman? Definitely not. Okay, fine. Fine, I'll go change. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Before you change, quick thing. You you want to kick me off a cliff and say yippee ki yippee ki motherfucker, yes, please. Me too. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to. Fine, but you guys have to be quick, because I am running late now. Nice. I go first. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open on the next morning with everybody wondering where Mr. Reynolds is, where the atheist guy is, but not for a long enough. Well, right. <laughs> and I love this moment because this has to happen in every horror movie, right? Where there's the first very early in the movie kill and everyone has to be like, oh, he probably just took a bus to somewhere he wasn't ever going to tell anybody about because <laughs> 90 minutes left in the movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but we establish he's, he's gone and nobody cares all that much. And then we get Lucy happening upon Catherine, the the illiterate niece. And he's, oh boy, darn it, she's just all fumbles and nerves. She accidentally says a swear. <gasps> oh, yeah. Jesus, Lucy comes in it. and is like, hey, I heard you suck at like everything. You're the worst. And <laughs> very first thing that happens, Catherine's like, I hurt my hand. I hurt my <laughs> yeah, Oh, my, my eye. I put my face in a paper shredder. <laughs> okay. This one feels like kind of a gimme. <laughs> So, but yeah, right. So, so Lucy's like, hey, I want to read your palm. And I'm like, ooh, that's the sin right there. Yeah, right. Your palm read. Mm-hmm. But she says, yeah, I see in your palm that you don't know how to read. Ah, uh, yes. The well-known palm line that tells the world if you know how to read or not. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, if you don't know how to read, you can't read it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> you don't ever hear about it because the people who haven't seen it don't know how to read it. <laughs> I like to think that in this universe, when you pass the reading test in grade school, you're like your like school librarian just slices that into your flesh. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> like, this one knows how to read. You don't have the cut. Or you get to watch <laughs> the reading line grow into your hand. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, but she's like, oh, you know, I know what it's like to not know how to read. I didn't learn to read until I was all grown up. And we all wrote in our notes, wait, is Catherine's sin that she wants to know how to read? Spoiler alert, yes. Yes. Well, her sin is that she wants more than God has given her, right? God made her stupid, so it's she should be happy to be stupid. That's how God made her. Now, I will point out, Catherine's not totally innocent because she's like, oh, wouldn't you like to be smarter? And Catherine's like, yeah, whenever I see a smart person, I just want to kill them and steal their smarts. And I was like, okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's a right. weird <laughs> impulse. <laughs> I get it. Couldn't you just imagine that you could suck it out with a straw or something? Right, or clone it to, or something. Why, why do they have Murder to? Murder them and steal it as a first impulse, Catherine. I feel like we got to work that through yeah. to a little <laughs> CBT maybe. <laughs> but Lucy's like, hey, you know what? Just so happens that I have a secret book that'll help you read. And she's like, really? A whole book? And she's like, well, the props department couldn't quite do that realistically. So I have a pamphlet for you here. <laughs> Instead. Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm just checking this demon's packing list. <laughs> Flesh sewing machine. Yep, check. Mm-hmm, gotta have that. Mm-hmm. Some literature. Yep, gotta have some. Yeah, some <laughs> On to behalf pass of out. Satan. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. No, just, just checking. Just checking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's gonna get weirder as we go, man. It sure <laughs> does. <laughs> but she's like, yeah, this secret book, this devil book, will make you learn how to read. And she's like, ooh, that sounds great. But just then, Mary comes in and she snaps at Catherine for having any joy in her life. The landlady absolutely deserves to become a paper doll. Like, yes. she is a monster to Catherine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't care about the money. I care about how she treats this child. Yeah, I don't know why the demon waits until it's like, I ah, 12% APR. All right, I got you. Like, you're good. You're good right. on the being mean to the child thing. Right. Her and Robert. So that night, everybody's having tea in the parlor or whatever. And... <laughs> 
we, we, we see a little moment where like Lucy is trying to slip Catherine the little devil book. Okay. It's so funny. I laughed so hard at this moment, but first because there's a long silence and everybody's just having an awkward night after like maybe one of us got murdered, but we're just going to hang out in the parlor. And then, and then one guy's like, "Get motherfucker! I win at cards, <laughs> idiot!" Yeah. And then, and then he's like, "Hey, single school teacher lady, do you want to play cards?" I mean, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, Robert. No one is confused about what you want to play. The whole house has been watching you annihilate your wife right. as gin rummy for days. They don't want to play with you because you're absolute dick about it. Right. I love gin, and I and when I, the only thing I love more than gin is pussy. So, <laughs> yummers. I love how it's like a mm. two wet roast beefs. That's what I love so. about it. Yum. Uh. Yeah. So he tries to get everybody to. <laughs> now we should point out, by the way, that Sam noticed when. Lucy tried to slip the the devil book to Catherine. He notices he knows he knows a demon in an old lady suit when he sees one, right? Well, he's a godly man. Exactly, yeah. mm-hmm. exactly. And this is where Mr. Gray, who again is just super obviously aware that she's That's a, Sam, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Is like, uh, hey, um, Lucy, this morning you said he said he wanted to take an early train, but there weren't any early trains. And he might as well just go. So you're pretty obviously a demon. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So you're demoning. But yeah, yeah. So everybody starts going to bed. He stops her and questions her. He's on to her, right? And so then we go upstairs where the the asthmatic crumpled wad is now stealing Miss Lester's key as she sleeps, the school teacher, right? Yeah. So she gets it for Lucy. And then Lucy uses her, correct me if I'm wrong, Kazoo of Doom. I have it as her vape. Oh, oh okay. I thought it was a breathalyzer, and I was like, okay. Sure. You don't have a car, though. <laughs> <laughs> so she uses this little kazoo to turn Miss Lester blue a la Violet Beauregard in Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. Right? Hey, quick question. Just yep, throwing yep. this out there. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck does that happen? <laughs> I have no fucking... It's never relevant to anything. Because Mario Paint, Eli. Because Mario right, Paint. Yeah, no, right, Mario they Paint. didn't sure, use yeah. all the effects yet. But also, so she has a magic like doppelganger kazoo or whatever. So Lucy can turn into whoever. Yes. So so the skin suit was just like, because that's fun to do for one of the just for funsies. Yes. The magic. Yeah. Like, You just completely undermined the entire premise of your film. Exactly. If she can just turn into whoever she wants, whenever she wants, why are we fucking around with a skin suit? Well, but the (laughs) weirdest part is, is that later on, she's going to take the form of one of these characters, but it's a skin suit, right? So, like, I thought for a while that she had all of them as skin suits, right? She just, like, had a skin suit for all of them in her bags. But she takes off the old lady's skin suit and is Miss Lester underneath it. Yeah. So either she's got a skin suit on a skin suit or she can (laughs) shapeshift. Tom Cruise is watching this movie being like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. (laughs) (laughs) They're really abusing the skin suit mechanic. I'm going to find a better religion. And then again, (laughs) correct me if I'm wrong, but then Lucy uses her magic powers to make Robert have to pee. Yep. So, uh, for those of you keeping track of her inventory for her D and D character, sheet, <laughs> we now have sewing machine that works with flesh. We have some literature about the devil and why you might want to join up with him. A vape that turns people purple while they sleep, and a have to pee dropper. Yep, she literally just did like the demon version of a frat house prank. Yes, like right. is, is this just like is whatever happening in this house just demon sorority rush week? (laughs) (laughs) Spoiler alert, but yes. (laughs) So yeah, so, but now she's, she's faking being Miss Lester and as Robert's coming out of the bathroom, she stops him and seduces him, right? Right. She's like, here's my key. Come to my bed. I'll be pretending to sleep. Have aggressive sex with me no matter what I say then. Do not stop and ask for consent. Really just get in there and he's like, oh yeah, I can't wait. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay, so it's late that night. Robert comes in for a fucking, he's still rocking his toothpaste clown outfit, by the way. Mm-hmm. And he starts just, now look, look, if, if this guy had any kind of like pacing in his lovemaking, this isn't all that. I mean, it's still fucking weird, right? She wakes up and some dude's like 
giving her a light kiss or whatever, but he goes all the way for fucking right away. He's zero to 60 in no seconds. She is dressed in under blankets and he appears to be trying to initiate the first thrust while that situation <laughs> is going on. The way he pulls her up out of bed, it is literally that board game, Don't Wake Daddy. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's just like, now you are upright. <laughs> So, and also she screams at this point. She's like screaming and telling him to stop. And he's like, well, no, <laughs> obviously, because you said earlier. So, so when she pulls out her gun and shoots him, it's like, well, yeah, now, even if you had been the one that propositioned him at the bathroom, that is a justified move there, right? Yeah. This is not like the porn Don't Wake Daddy that I've seen at yeah. all. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I love the Hasbro porn series. Yes. Yes. The mousetrap. Oh, my God. The first one being Hasbro, <laughs> which is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Well, you know, the problem with the, it's, the problem with mousetrap is it never quite gets all the way there, you know? Yeah. Mm, so <laughs> the ball never really drops into the top. <laughs> Connect four. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hungry, hungry. Kip, I want you to know Heath is going to be completely silent for the next 30 minutes of this record because yes. he's thinking of board game puns, but it's too late, but he's still accumulating more. Just so you know. Yeah, I can't this is wait. What you've done. Okay, yeah. Just send me a message later with with all of them. There'll okay, be an yeah. episode like we'll share a Google Doc. Four point one or something. Point yeah. one. Yeah. Choking all. <laughs> <laughs> Choking all is good. That's, no, that's pretty good. So, okay. So, but so she shoots. Poop shoots and ladders. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Noah. I know you are trying to do a podcast. Yeah, so <laughs> but a podcast to do here, but thank you. Um, Candy gland. There. Nice. Ah. There we go. All right. Well done. Well done. If you, if you, if you delay long enough. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but she shoots the dude. She runs out all covered in blood and Lucy's right there. And she's like, all right, calm down. No need to get all worked up about it. And I'm like, no, there is though. Right. Everyone listens to Lucy way too quickly in this movie. Right. She's like, come on, do my skin suit. And he's like, all right, I'll see where this is going. And now this girl's committed murder of a supposed rapist. And she's like, let's go back in and chat this through. And she's like, I mean, you are older than me in the time dimension. OK, I'll hear you. Right. Out. Yeah. But not even let's go back in. At first, she just says, go back to your room. And the woman's like, buy my set. And she's like, I'll be there with you. And it's like, okay, well, you could have, the man is still in yeah, there. Yeah, you just let's go back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they go back into the room. Robert, who is dressed, I have to emphasize this again, as Ebenezer Scrooge as a toothpaste clown, is now holding this tiny little decorative pillow against his bullet wound. Mm -hmm. It's like this actor was like, okay, I'm going to do this as silly as it's possible to get away with. I just, like, he's mad at the filmmaker. See, this is why you need 19 pillows on the bed sometimes. You might need <laughs> to, to stop the blood. blood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they argue in front of, you know, they have like a sibling, he did it, no, she did it kind of an argument. Yeah. She throws a little like book at him and he's like, ow, okay, ow. <laughs> I guess it's right in the bullet wound. <laughs> Jeez. So, but then Lucy's like, all right, well, let's move him into my room. And nobody is like, this is weird. You're doing weird things, lady. Why are we following your directions? <laughs> yeah. Right. But so she gets, they get him into her room, lay him down on her bed. And then she just sends Miss Lester away. She's like, all right, well, you know, you did your part now. And she, and, and Miss Lester's like, uh, okay. Yeah, I am. I am kind of nappy still. I'll just, I'll just head back. <laughs> yeah, I really didn't room. get much sleep at all after the. I murder. think it's, I think it's one of those things where you wake up early, but not so close to waking up that you can get back to sleep. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so then, so Robert and Lucy are alone in the room now, and she starts explaining to Robert that she can save his life and make the bullet wound go away if he'll give her his soul. Well, I wish, I wish she said, give me your soul. Well, she's right. like, wouldn't you do anything yeah, if right. I could heal yeah, you? Exactly. And he's like, what do you mean by anything? And she's like, I, I kind of need you to keep it vague. Yeah, right, right, yeah. For my uh, evil thing. Here, let me put a time travel tourniquet tummy belt on you while we talk this through. There you through, go, huh? another. I'm so glad I packed my magic bullet hole healing <laughs> belt. <laughs> <laughs> you know she was standing there with her husband and her husband was like, honey, you're not going to need your tourniquet tummy time travel belt. And she was like, you never know. I might go swimming. The one time I don't yeah, bring it, I'm going to end up needing it. <laughs> Isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, so she puts that on him. The the wound gets sucked away, and then she like reaches in to get the bullet out with the fucking thing that Arnold got the bug out of his head with in Total Recall. Mm -hmm. Right, the little gun. (laughs) And the whole time she's monologuing about how like science is actually just devil magic and how they like redress how devil magic looks to humans every so often to like go with the times. (laughs) What? Yes. Well, because he asks her what all the stuff is, and she's like, "We didn't think about that. All science is devil magic." Right. Right. Yeah. She says, "She's like, well, you know, all this medical looking stuff. I, I I use that instead of magic stuff because otherwise you wouldn't believe all of this." And I'm like, "He's gonna not have a bullet wound at the end. I think you could have just gone a hocus pocus, focus chocus or whatever, and and he still would believe you at the end." Yeah. Also. It doesn't matter because he's now like you possess his soul and you're going to sew him into a fucking voodoo doll. Mm. Right. Just go right to brown and bleed or whatever. Yeah. You, it doesn't matter. It's, <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a magic thing. There you go. So, yeah. So and then we cut down. We hear this like weeping sound and we cut down to the paper doll and we see the atheist guy is trapped inside it. Right. With all the fucking graphical quality of the annoying orange. <laughs> and again, like it is super not scary to see a paper doll with the annoying orange face on it going, Hello! Yes, it right. <laughs> exactly. Well, and then it, once, I guess once they figure you're good and terrified, they cut up to Robert looking up and Lucy has a crochet hook right over top of him. <laughs> so apparently she's going to crochet him to death. <laughs> okay. This guy sucks for sure. I feel like the, you know, Shakespearean ruse of Robin Goodfellow shouldn't really count as a mortal sin either, right? Right, yes. Yeah. It's the, the abuse of his wife should count. Yeah, exactly. But that's not what they're going for. Sure. We established that he is a spousal abuser. We did not need vaudevillian shenanigans to trap him. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, okay. So then we we cut back to Miss Lester. She's like rocking back and forth in the room. And w- that's when Robert's wife, Ellen, shows up She's like, hey, I have to help you cover up the shooting, right? We have to clean up and we're going to hide the body or whatever. Which, okay, for the record, the scene that we were talking about earlier where they show her turning like blue or purple or whatever for a hot second, that shot was so freaking fast that I could not tell the first time I watched this movie. I had to watch this twice because I must have blinked the first time and I genuinely thought that this was just like evil women hating hating men stuff coming up. Mm-hmm. Like They made no effort whatsoever to delineate when it was the demon and when it was just right. these people <laughs> no, being so awful. Bad. No. I don't think the movie knows at certain moments which is which. Yeah, in three scenes, they make up a thing so you can tell when it's the demon and when it's not a demon because of this scene, right? right. They're like, yeah. hey guys, that scene sucked. The demon has a limp now. We'll get to right. it. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we're not going to go back and wreck on it at all. Right. No, right. absolutely not. I think they wrote the movie with the skin suit idea as the vehicle and then they just like gave up because they couldn't execute it and now they have no idea because it's just like poof somebody else (laughs) and the movie doesn't know yeah right like they thought that they were going to have scenes of her changing into the suit that looked like Miss Lester or changing into the suit that looked like Ellen or whatever Yeah, but yeah but now Ellen is the demon pretending to be Ellen in an Ellen suit or using Ellen doppelganger powers or whatever and and Miss Lester is like, well, no, I really think we should call the police because, you know, he was trying to rape me and it's justified to, to shoot him. And, you know, Demon Ellen says, no, you know, the police, the judges, the juries, they're all men. They'd never believe you. And I'm like, yeah, just another way the devil uses feminism against us. So <laughs> what's amazing is that you feel like the demon Lucy checked in with her supervisor in between. She was like, yeah, so I, I got the guy because he gave me anything. And then, you know, Mrs. Lester shot him and the boss was like, "Sorry, what?" I, she was actually self-defending. So can you go get her on like a, a technical charge like lesbianism? Yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> the lesbianism was chef's kiss. I got so excited. I was like, okay, <laughs> now, I, now I can fully endorse this film. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, because Ellen turns to her and she's like, oh, so I I have to help you clean up. Go ahead and get naked here in the middle of the room. And she's like, you sure we wouldn't want to use a bathroom for this? Because there is a bathroom in this house, I have to assume. And she's like, nope, you have to get naked right now. We have to be close like sisters. 
who wash each other nakedly in the middle of our bedrooms, I guess. It was a different time in 2001, Noah. I guess, yes. Keith and Wright's formative years. This was a lot like Don't Wake Daddy, the movie I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so she she starts washing her up and, and, and Miss Lester's like, hey, how about I just do my own boobs? You could just, I would, I, I also have access to this. And then she just watch. Yeah. <laughs> but then she's just overcome with passion and she kisses demon Ellen. And it turns out that her sin was being a lesbian the whole time. Right. Which Ellen slash demon reacts to by being like, oh, that's convenient. Good. All right. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, oh, awesome. Because I had no idea how I was going to get you. I got to be honest. You were just sort of a blood covered lady. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the work comes to you. Sometimes you come to the work. That's what we always say. Right. So, yeah. So Ellen's like, so, hey, so, hey, I will definitely fuck you. Would you do anything for me if I fucked you? And even if you're not a demon, this, like, this is a terrible time to say yes, right? That's a dumb thing to say yes to but yeah and the rule seems to be the word anything has to be in there yes exactly but miss lester doesn't say the word so you can just get him to say yes to you the demon saying anything in a question right is weird i feel like it should, it should have to be like an exit row scenario where it's like i, would I need, need a, a verbal, verbal right, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it can't be yeppers it has to be yes yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wishmaster yes. Genie is watching this movie. Oh, come on. That's bullshit. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Every time I fly with Anne, she insists on doing a yeppers or mm -hmm or something. Not yes. When we're in the oh, room. my God. Every time. <laughs> Anne's the worst. <laughs> Anne's the worst. Anne sees the flight attendant coming and is already like shaking and smiling at me and laughing, <laughs> ready to do it. That's the rolling. That's the knocking over roll ups of the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so then so they get I guess done fucking. They head down to Lucy's room to you know finish their deception, death, murder, cover up or whatever. She says, Ellen says to her at this point, "Don't be afraid." And Ms. Lester's like, "I can't be afraid now. It's too late to be afraid. I'm a lesbian. Right? Now. Yes, I'm not afraid. I'm a lesbian. <laughs> Once you scissor, you can't feel fear." <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> They like just had sex though. Nothing counts right now. You it can't count when you say things right after you had sex. That's nothing. Come <laughs> he on. To use that argument before. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, but she's she's sewing. Lucy is sewing Robert into another paper doll, right? And and he's got these little squeaks of protest, which are just fucking delightful. Yep. And again, I'm sorry. I keep bringing it back to this stupid flesh thread. Why are we using that sewing machine? When there's like literally the doll is completely sewn up with black stitches. Yeah. It is actively in the sewing machine and there is no stitches being added anywhere to this doll. Right. I am begging this film to show me the flesh thread <laughs> used yeah. anywhere. Also, when she did take his soul, she had crochet needles. So he should right. be a crochet doll. It yeah, made no exactly. sense. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, with the knowledge that what we've already seen in this movie is all it has to offer and the knowledge that we still have to see it again four more fucking times, I suppose we've earned a break. But first, let me have act three, the hard sell. Will Lucy win Ellen's soul by making her answer a bunch of questions that rhyme with soul first? Will Mary burn for eternity because it didn't occur to her that the surgeon could have been a woman? Will Sam go to hell for accidentally saying what in response to guy who gives me a soul says what? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the plotting conclusion of Stitches. Oh, thank you for helping me to my room, Heath and Wright. Yeah, no problem, Mrs. Um, whatever your name was. Now, I hear you're engaged. Why don't you live with your fiancé? People like having their own spaces. Right? Cool. Nothing to unpack there. Listen, it's not. I, I know what your heart truly desires. I see my fiancé whenever I want to, right down the street. Knowledge, Heath Enright. Knowledge. Don't you desire to know what is real and what is not? Uh, no, um, I, I feel like I have a pretty good grip on that stuff. Um... Demons, gods, I, I could show you the truth. Oh, are you like a Christian? So, uh, yeah, no, no thanks. I appreciate it, but I'm good. No, no, Heath Enright, I could help you know for certain all that you doubt. Okay. What would you give me for knowledge, Heath Enright? And you're asking for money. Are you sure you're not a Christian? This no, feels I, I'm not, Christian. I'm not Christian okay. and I'm not asking for money. What would you give me for knowledge? <sighs> I don't know. $8? Wait, what? I, I have a 10, but 
I want to get an Arizona iced tea later. So eight. Okay. I am offering you eternal knowledge of the universe. Yep. Yeah. Got that. Um, I'm really just trying to exit the conversation at this point. Okay. Fine. 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 Forget, forget the eternal knowledge of the universe. What will you give me for FIFA 2025 three months early? Everlasting soul. There it is. For PS5 though. Yeah, for sure. For PS5. Awesome. <laughs> it's the same game. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action the next day with Ellen coming into the room. This is real Ellen seeing fake Robert fretting at the window, her husband. So, and he explains at this point, you know, the demon explains through her Robert suit that he's a changed man and he's not going to be abusive anymore. He's going to give them the life they deserve with a home and servants. <laughs> ah, yes. First comes love. Then comes marriage. Then comes servants. Yes. Then but, comes the baby and the baby care. Yeah. You deserve <laughs> yeah. servants? <laughs> but yeah, but he promises he'll be a good husband from now on if she will rob Mary. Take all the money out of her big I don't trust the banks drawer. Exactly. Right. So she's like, yeah, okay. So like tax evasion is the cosmic lesson now? For I don't. <laughs> Mary Grove? <laughs> I guess. So yeah, so but we get Robert leaving for work. Mary's faking a headache so she can stay home that day. I, I have no idea why. It doesn't actually matter. She doesn't rob her during the day or anything. I also have to point out that this is where they introduce the limp that yep. I teased earlier. Yes. Right? As Robert is walking out, the landlady's like, Robert, are you okay? And he's like, nope, just a thing we have not introduced to the movie yet. Yep. Yeah. I slept on it weird. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> No, I just slept on it or something is the exact <laughs> line. This demon is so bad at lying. And you'd figure that'd be like the one thing they do, right? Sewing and lying. Right. And and answering why you suddenly have a limp. That's a question that demon gets all the fucking time because somehow the demon can do different heights and different weights and different voices, but can't get rid of the fucking limp. Yeah. The limp that we do not see until this point yes. in the movie. Right, right. And the movie is just going to gaslight us on it and be like, no, the limp has been here the whole fucking time. It's been <laughs> you here. You just didn't notice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, okay, so it's later that day. Mary's reading a book. Somebody comes in. She hides the book. I don't know. Like, reading is sinful. I, well, it is. I oh, guess. it's her accounting notebook. Oh, all right. Yeah, that makes more sense. And that's her <laughs> sin. Yeah, right. Her accounting, yeah. So, but it's Lucy. Lucy comes in and she sits down and she gives her this whole like, oh, you know, I have all this money and I don't know what to do with it. Do you know what to do with my money? Kind of a thing, right? Yeah. More entrapment. And Mrs. Grove is like, yeah, don't use banks. The Fed's a fucking Ponzi scheme. And I was like, make a skin suit out of her. Make a skin suit right now. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was on the opposite side of this. I was like, all right, we get it. Like, green is a deadly sin or whatever. But to Eli's point at the top of this, like, these are the people that we're choosing. We're not going to we're not going to go after like a corporate billionaire. Right. Instead, we're going to go after like a widow with trust issues yeah. trying to get <laughs> by like renting rooms like I don't care that she read too many conspiracy theories on Facebook. Like, she is trying <laughs> her fucking best. Give her a break. Well, I care. But yes, go after the corporate billionaire first. But yeah, I mean. exactly. Maybe maybe we work our way down from Elon Musk yes, to some exactly. little lady. Right, right, right. There you go. Trickle down demon economics. <laughs> <My God. laughs> and I'm going to say... By the way, we will later see the drawer's not even full, right? We're <laughs> no, talking it's not even one that, layer of bills here, folks. It's like five grand or something maybe in yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah, so but Lucy convinces her that she needs her help because her husband died and left her all these stocks. And boy, she just doesn't know what to do with all her stocks. Why don't we all go upstairs and look at all my stocks? Right? She has a trunk of physical stock certificates. Yeah, is yeah. What they're claiming? I guess bearer bonds. <laughs> so they go upstairs together, and at the end, at the last minute, Lucy's like, "You know what? I don't even. I've just changed my mind. Maybe I should. I'll put give all you my, my money soul. The, yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously, what? Okay, we don't see the moment where Mary gives up her soul, but she is doing a favor for Lucy, and she's going to get some form of kickback. What the fuck linguistic convolutions took place that she was like, would you give me anything to help me? 
Well, and, well and none. Plus, they don't say the word anything. <laughs> it, this one doesn't count. No. This is bullshit. No, well, so that's the thing, though. It's like, if this writer was even remotely clever, every time she would be, like, using this person's sin against them in some way, and she almost does here in that, like, she makes the lady greedy, but then we never see how that plays out because the writer couldn't figure out how does that play out to her agreeing to do anything for something, right? Yeah, exactly. The evil line at the end is like, okay, I guess we'll make an accommodation about the financial well, advisory uh, that we'll uh, do. That's it. Right. But uh, I'm going to charge you a transfer fee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, no, that would make sense. Though. No, yeah, that's, that's, that's why that, she that, has that, a management right. fee for ETFs because they have to be rebalanced every so often. <laughs> so, a lot of this stuff is evil, though. A lot of this yeah, stuff no, is no, actually evil. That's what I'm saying. Evil, like, so. yeah, you, I, I was on the demon side pretty much the whole time anyway. <laughs> so, okay, so later that night, we get Sam telling Mary that, that he's gone to the police over the fact that all the people he lives with are disappearing one at a time. And she's like, wow, no one in a horror movie's ever done that shit. Well, oh, come so on! <laughs> fuck! <laughs> Dude! Oh, fuck. I gotta get out of here! I gotta get out of here! Yeah. Well, it, the, the, the movie really plays it, though, like, you know, he's really Christian, so he notices when the people he lives with mysteriously disappear one by one. You know, he's... He's looking for that. But unfortunately, the police told them that they couldn't do anything because the people hadn't been missing for 48 hours yet. Not a thing. Imagine if that was actually true. Yeah, right. Yep. Imagine <laughs> if you were at the police station at the 47th hour and they were like, nope. No. <laughs> so, come back after lunch. Come back after Quick lunch. Quick PSA, because I know it's in a bunch of movies. That is not true. No, it's not, not true. a thing at all. <laughs> Good. The sooner the better, everybody. In fact, in fact, the thing that's kind of true is that within 48 hours, they have way less chance of solving your murder. So waiting is a really important thing not to do. Right. Yeah, exactly. But so he tells Mary, yeah, I'm going to figure out what's happening, what, what's going on, if it's the last thing I do. And then he leaves and we watch her walk out of the room and she has the limp now. So uh. apparently Mary was killed off screen and we didn't see it. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm still very mad that, that we didn't get the anything yeah. from that one. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, exactly. That's the rule. Thank yes, you. Yes, it's her brand. Like, how is Lucy going to sell merch in hell <laughs> <laughs> with anything with 12 question marks if she doesn't do it consistently? <laughs> oh, she's the star of a sitcom in hell. She it's like bursts right, in the door. Line. Did someone say anything? <laughs> right, right. It's just her branding. <laughs> she said it. <laughs> so, okay. So she runs upstairs and she changes into now into her Robert suit, I guess, right? And she goes to talk to Ellen and she's like, all right, so it's time to steal the money. I have a plan. I'm going to distract Mary by talking to her and then you go in and get all her money. And I'm like, well, your plan is you come up with a plan then, right? <laughs> but yeah, so, so he goes to distract her. Ellen sneaks into Mary's room. She uses the, the razor blade faux key thing. <laughs> Right. <laughs> no keys, just blades. Yeah. <laughs> so it's another tagline. I love that taking the razor out of the nothing makes the like shing. Yeah. No, it's not, no <laughs> right, reason. right. Uh, she's trying to be all sneaky. She's like, fuck. It's like a lightsaber. Really loud metal noise, no matter what you do with this. This is crazy. Yeah. And then Mrs. Grove catches her. Right. But it's actually the demon. But up until this point, her only sin has been, she's just been abused and belittled by her husband until she was so desperate to end the abuse that she would do anything to please him. Right. Like she hasn't done anything. No, right? not at all. And she never, well, so so then like Mrs. Grove catches her, uh, Mary catches her. She's like, oh, you're stealing my money. I'll call the police and you and your husband are go to jail. So she goes to call the police and Ellen comes up and she's like, hey, you know what's a great reason not to use a giant straight razor as your key to your money? And she slits her throat. <laughs> yeah. There's a very artistic moment where the whole screen turns red as she, as she yes. gets murders. Mm -hmm. I, I was very sad that we did not have a Sweeney Todd like whistle after that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so but Ellen was like, oh no, what have I done? So she goes to like, I don't know, wash her hands off on Mary's clothes in her closet. 
This was my favorite. But she's being choosy about it, right? She's like, no, no, not the purple. Oh, wedding dress. No, definitely not that. Okay, here we go. This rag looks awful. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh my God, this is cute. Oh my God, I would totally wear this. Mrs. Grove's wardrobe is just so fetch. I'm just trying to do a Lady Macbeth <laughs> monologue. <laughs> oh, there's a blood rag. There's a blood rag. Okay. Oh, blood rag. Oh, oh, she already has a blood one. rag in her closet. Why does she hang this though? <laughs> So yeah, but so as she's doing that, fake Mary rises up, slit throat and all, and she goes, ha, 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 I got you, tricked you into murdering me. Now you're going to hell. And she's like, well, yeah, it's a murder. I is like I would anyway, right? So now it's just timing. Right. If anything, you made me not murder someone. So yeah. I feel like I should get off. Yeah, right? honestly, because you're alive now. Okay, but did anyone else notice that while the demon is doing this like monologue about there are things you shouldn't do even for love, like bullshit, the monologue, like the demon is off screen and it's just Mrs. Delaney and like the demon like reaches out her hand. I swear to God that they slowed down the footage here yes. because the monologue took too long and they didn't have enough footage for it. <laughs> yep. And so it's just like a slightly slow motion reaction from this woman as she's being like, mm -hmm. like monologued at by a demon. It was yeah. fucking hilarious. Sorry, are you moving in slow-mo right now? Are you listening <laughs> to me? The voiceover was long. I feel right? like you're or, not listening anymore. <laughs> or these two actors, right, had to stand there while they played the voiceover and they were like, this is, hey, Chris, this is a little long. And he's like, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then Sam comes knocking on Catherine's door in the middle of the night. I know, listeners, you don't remember who the fuck these people are. Sam is the good Christian guy. Catherine is the illiterate niece, the, the abused illiterate niece. So he knocks on her door in the middle of the night and he's like, look, I know this is going to sound fucking weird, but old lady Lucy is a demon and everybody's been murdered except for us. And to her credit, Catherine takes that pretty well. She's like, okay, well, I guess we got to get the fuck out of here, right? Stop, drop, and roll. No, Catherine. She's, <laughs> she's a little slow. She's like, but what about the new old lady who just came in? He's like, we're leaving right now. Fuck. Did you not hear what I just said? You're the worst. She's obviously the fucking monster. She showed up right before everybody. God damn it. So, yeah, so they go to leave, but the front door is locked from, from the outside, apparently. So he's like, all right, well, I'll break the window. But the window is magical and he can't break it. So there was a meeting in Foley, right, where they decided on the sound effect for the can't break the window <laughs> thing. <laughs> and they were like, hey, Alan, um, I noticed that you have a boy yo 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 down here in yeah. your notes. Are you worried that that might make the movie a little um, silly? I paid a good deal of money for the whole thing. I wanted to All use right, each of boy them. Boy, yo, 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 it yep. is. All right. Or, you know, uh, maybe it was just him going like, oh, now it's going to be silly. You insisted. I put in those high-pitched screams for the fucking paper <laughs> dolls, and now my boy, yo, 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 is too far. I thought they'd be scarier, okay? <laughs> Sorry, do you want a gritty noise for that? What are you talking about? <laughs> So, yeah, so he's like, oh, you know, they, we can't get out. Catherine, I have to explain the rules of the movie to you real quick. We're in a horror movie and a demon is trying to take our soul for the devil. Right. And Catherine's like, do you mean Mrs. Albright's a demon? Oh, shit. She's right behind me, isn't she? Fuck. I knew she was going to do that. <laughs> so they have the like, you know, the big monologue of like, you know, why are you here? What are you trying to do here? That we have that moment. Right. And she reveals that this movie is her, the demon's, quarterly performance review? Yes. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> it is Demon Sorority yeah. Rush Week. Right. Oh yes. my God. Yes. <laughs> hey, my name is Lilith. I'm attending <laughs> hell. These boots are from hell. This Jess is from hell. hell? I'm yeah. also from hell. <laughs> <laughs> Still better than Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but she's like, oh, you know, you're going to be a tough. I could tell by the strong set of your jaw that you were going to be the protagonist in this film. But uh, fear not. I've got some plans. I just have to go upstairs first. So she goes upstairs. We we dwell on the limp a little bit longer. We we yes. learn. That oh, we dwell on the limp in the best way. <laughs> yes. The Lord. He, she's she's like, oh, an old war wound. And he's like, what war? And she's like, you know. The war on Christmas. Yeah, the right. War. <laughs> the war on gender. <laughs> so, yeah, so so Catherine freaks out. She starts, starts trying to open the other windows, which, you know, good honor. You got to be thorough. Okay, but <laughs> Paul Newman, whatever his name is, Mr. Gray. Sam. He's like, hey, mm -hmm. fucking Catherine, I don't think the demon forgot one of the windows with <laughs> the window magic, idiot. 
Well, so, the, and here's the thing, of course, uh, back in the day, and uh, again, this movie, I think it takes place in 1932 or something because it's, it was before FDIC insurance, uh, based on what uh, Mary said. Back in this day, it was impossible for an older guy to explain something to a younger woman without physically shaking her constantly. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> Right. He grabs her by both shoulders and he's like, I'm trying to make a point and I'm old timey. And she's like, oh, OK, I guess I have to be. There's this great moment. I love how stupid Catherine is. I want her in every movie. He's like, she wants our souls. And Catherine's like, no. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, the answer is obviously no, Catherine. <laughs> uh, you notice people sigh a lot after you talk? Have you ever noticed that, Catherine? Hey, sit right there for a second. Leslie Nielsen's going to slap you a few times. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But just, just then, suddenly... Asthmatic crumple wad minion shows up. Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, right. They react <laughs> like there's a fucking mouse loose in the house, right? Uh, he grabs it, he rips it in half. <laughs> but it's which we can rip up the papers. Yes, apparently <laughs> that's all it takes. He rips. Well, it's not quite all it takes, right? Because he rips it up, it's still alive, so he has to rip it up more and more until it's confetti. It's got, you're gonna have to rip it into little pieces, man. I'm <laughs> just that is two of me. <laughs> so. So, and of course, he rips it up so bad that Lucy's mirror, magic mirror breaks upstairs, right? So then she does another summoning poem with no sense of meter at all. It's fucking awful. This felt improvised and like, I'm going to land on a rhyme eventually. <laughs> I have what yeah. else rhymes with Lee? Lee. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Nailed it. Command Lee. Yeah. <laughs> So, but apparently, but this is the spell that's going to bring all the paper dolls to life that are inhabited by all their uh, other souls. And she's going to send the paper dolls down to beat up the good guys. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Are you saying we're about to get to watch two full grown adults pretend to lose a fight to paper dolls? We are because about to yeah, watch exactly <laughs> that. Holy fucking shit. And if you're thinking like, how, what could you possibly do to make that exciting or believable nothing it's it would be impossible and even if it was possible these filmmakers did not fucking try yeah the actors from chucky watch this movie and are like okay well that looks silly <laughs> okay if they had actually done like paper cuts and paul newman was like ah fuck it's ah. under my nail oh, oh. Okay, this is the worst. This is the worst. you can have my soul you i can have my go soul. to hell that's fine <laughs> just get rid of this get rid of this get rid of this ah. yeah but also, they had just successfully defeated another paper demon by ripping it up. Right. They don't even try with these paper dolls. Do they try burning them with the candles that they just lit? No. No. What do they do? They step on they them. They punch them on a carpeted <laughs> floor. <Yes. laughs> it's a piece of paper, you fucking idiot. There's one point where, like, he starts to stumble. He starts walking and he turns around and we can see that one of the paper dolls is just hanging off of his back. And we're like, what is it doing, though? Is it, It's a little heavy. Is it it's a little heavy back there. through his shirt? I don't understand. I don't like it. <laughs> To one of them had a fishing hook. <laughs> oh, did it? Yeah, one of them did <laughs> yeah. have a fish, fish hook at one point. Yeah, I remember that. Nice. But yeah, but ultimately the paper dolls pin Sam down to the ground. Right? Fucking Gulliver's Travel Against style. All odds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. With thread. Yeah. The Lilith Pucians. Nice. Oh, oh, nice. There we well go. done, there it sir. Is. He sweeps a pile of papers with board game <laughs> sex puns off his desk. I, I did just close a window. I did just close a window. I can rest. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but Lucy comes down now that he's pinned and he, Sam starts saying the Lord's prayer at her, but that doesn't do anything because she's pretty high level demon, apparently. Well, it was at this moment that I realized that this demon had a brand deal with like the scrapbooking department of Michaels or something. Like, <laughs> yes. I am convinced that in 2001, you can find somewhere that there was a paper doll kids craft workshop tie in with this film. You're right. Yeah. yeah, there you go. It is the only explanation. <laughs> Collect all the souls in your family. Yeah. Right. It must have been that like Lucy showed up after all the good demon themes were taking and she was like sewing. Yes. <laughs> Really weird happy meal. Really leaned into the not being Hobby Lobby thing for a while yeah, in 2001. Right, right. They went full demonic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, so, but Sam is, is telling Lucy, like, you'll never get me. I'm a good man of the Lord. I'm not going to fall for any demon tricks. And just then, she opens up the door and reveals that they captured Catherine, and she's all tied up in a way that doesn't seem like it would work. Right. 
logistically. Yeah. I love that Sam tried to recite the Bible and Lucy was like, oh, you're studying the Bible. Never heard of that one before. False. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but so apparently the paper dolls are torturing Catherine in a way that we can't really tell. Okay. Why should they're up her dress Thank somewhere? Thank you. Let's be honest. Do we think the paper dolls are stabbing Catherine in the vajooch? Is that what we, is that what this movie <laughs> wants us to I believe? Thought. I got, I, no. I, in my head, it was lower leg torture, which is pretty low level there. But then I was like, okay, it's paper cuts that again. That would get me. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Even on the lower leg. Yeah. I wrote three words. Paper cut pussy. Okay. So, <laughs> everybody's journey. All right. So we're divided. We're divided <laughs> two and two. Democracy so, in yep. action, folks. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I guess it's up to the listener to decide. Hey, write in. Vajooch or no vajooch? <laughs> using the hashtag, hashtag vajooch or no vajooch. <laughs> so. We're Twitch streamers now, too, Kep. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Is this a raid? Are we doing a raid? <laughs> I, I'm i convinced Eli doesn't know what a raid is. I don't is. know what fucking <laughs> I also anything don't know is. what a raid is. is so not yes. a god. I am so there for you. You are a near and dear person in my life and heart, and I want nothing but the best for you. But gun to my head, I'm like, everyone watch my friend, please. <laughs> <laughs> wherever that is sometimes Amazon Prime gives you money I don't know I don't know what to do hey if you have Amazon Prime use it to order one kip I don't know <laughs> I'm like Catherine I'm being tortured in the vajooch <laughs> two guys with top hats deliver kip it's really fun that's true that's true oh my god I wish <laughs> <laughs> I've been present when two guys in top hats <laughs> delivered kip <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was much more of an alcohol poisoning situation. <laughs> so, yeah. So, okay. I got to steer back into the movie. You were at podcasting. This point. That's no all, this kind, of, kind of my hard, hardest part of my job. So, yeah. So, she's getting lower leg tortured by the paper uh, dolls. And Sam's like, don't, whatever you do, don't say I'll give you anything if you make anything. it stop. And Catherine's like, I'll give you anything. God damn it. <laughs> damn it. Well, there you go. Slapping on a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the back of the t-shirt's just Catherine giving double guns to the camera. But Sam is like, hey, I'll tell you what. I'm the main character. Well, the protagonist. Anyway, I guess you're the main character. But but I'm the protagonist. I will trade my soul for Catherine's. And then Lucy, like, they, they like negotiate this for a while. Right. Doesn't seem like there's any, you know, place of negotiation for Sam or... Or what's her name? Catherine at all? Really? But Lucy's like, no, that's a stupid trade. You're fucking old. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to name a much longer contract out loud right now that you've thought ahead of? The and party of the first part agrees <laughs> okay. to the they, second part. They're known as the second part. We might as well watch them go through mediation, right? They're both just the legal bills are adding up. They're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, Jesus. right. Right. Yeah. Right. But so, yeah. So, but ultimately, she agrees that, like, She'll give Catherine her soul back and she won't try to tempt her again, but she can't have like unlimited sins or anything. She has to like, she ultimately can still go to hell. And he's like, yeah, that sounds like a great deal. And we're all like, dude, you're making a deal with a fucking demon. You don't think that maybe she's like slipped in a trick in there on somewhere. But, but no, he doesn't. I mean, in his defense, the tricks have been very transparent up until this That's point. That's true. <laughs> yeah, right. And the whole time he's been like, look, skin mask, everybody. This is a <laughs> it's, demon. It doesn't fit. For sure. Even, yeah. So, but it turns out, so Catherine goes to leave. She's like, you're free to leave, Catherine. And Catherine goes to leave. But it turns out, Catherine has been on Satan's side the whole time, ever since she learned devil magic from the devil book. Oh my god. This is supposed to be like a twist, but we saw the twist happen already in the we movie. We saw we literally watched it, yeah. Yeah, but wait, so but uh, Lucy's like, "So, hey Catherine, do you accept Satan of your own free will?" And she's like, "Do accept Satan of my own free will." And she turns to Sam and she says, "See? Gotcha. That's still technically inside the bounds of our contract." And she still goes to hell. And now you go to hell too. Honestly, I support Catherine. Like she, again, she was in a house full of people who were totally fine with the way that Mrs. Grove treated her. The one person to offer her any out or any kind of help was this demon. Like, come on. I worked for Cutco for one summer. I've made worse deals than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, team demon all the way. Team demon all the way. 
So can make this paper into a corkscrew. <laughs> <laughs> so they go upstairs again. And then suddenly the asthmatic wad shows up and you're like, oh, hey, wait, wasn't the asthmatic wad torn into confetti? But it turns out that she's made Sam into her new asthmatic wad. Asthmatic wad is my favorite Pokemon. (laughs) 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 I hate Kip. Hey, Kip, I've never felt closer to anyone than you and me both doing (laughs) the same Pokemon and choosing that he says wad at the same time. (laughs) That's it. When I die, when my heart attack comes, Kip's in, everybody. Just so you know, we found a replacement. (laughs) When he evolves, it's just an inhaler. That's it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the vape is from. Oh, this is all coming shit. again. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Y'all, this movie's amazing. We <laughs> love it. I, I don't think it is. All right. So the devil wins. Happy ending at the very least. Kip, thanks so much for the recommendation and for hanging out with us today. Thanks for having me. Do, would anyone judge me if I went and watched it again right now? Oh, I, I, will, I will absolutely. Let's rent a theater <laughs> together and watch it, Kip. Let's do it. And of course, if our listeners wanted to hear more from you, where, where should they go? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Kipton. That's K-I-P-T-I-D. All right. And of course, you'll find that linked in the show notes for this episode as well. Give them your Amazon Prime, whatever that is. <laughs> I do it. Do it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Stitches, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to step on the same fucking rake next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. An American scientist contacts Mars by radio and receives information that Mars is a utopia and that Earth's people can be saved if they return to the worship of God. Revolution sweeps through Earth, including the Soviet Union, but there remains doubt about the messages being genuine, as an ex-Nazi claims he was duping the Americans. (gasps) We'll be watching... Red Planet Mars. How the fuck did I not know that that existed? Holy <laughs> shit. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 454 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kipton for hanging out with us today. Be sure to check the show notes for a link to their other stuff. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that helped make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, the Scaling the Citation Native D D minus and the skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email god awful movies gmail.com tim robertson takes care of our social media our theme song was written and performed by ryan slot of address on mars all the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer morgan clark and was used for permission thanks again for giving us a drink of your life this week for heath and right neilan bosnick i'm no illusions promise to work hard to earn another drink next week until then we'll leave you with a breakfast club close mrs grove went on to be Just fine, because Lucy forgot to follow up on the email about the financial advisory thing, so nothing happened. (laughs) The rolling ball of poop paper went on to be in a loving and fulfilling polyamorous relationship with its other ripped up pieces. (laughs) Oh, nice. (laughs) Lucy went back to hell where they continued to pick on her for being the paper doll themed demon. (laughs) Mr. Gray went on to be tortured in eternity forever for not triple stamping a double stamp. No (laughs) backsies. After sex, I'll be like, yeah, Ayn Rand is great. Absolutely. That's a really good book. It tells you, you know, it's important for like public policy. You have to, you have to read that. That's uh, I must say anything important. before sex guy myself. What? All right. Stop it there. <laughs> what I love is Usually. that you said five louder as though if you said five loud five. enough, it could make up for <laughs> the fact that you didn't say. Well, obviously, it's like when you sing loud during the chorus because you don't know the words for the verses. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then you come in five. I knew that one. Five. I said five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fake fan. Yeah. It's yeah. The right. End yeah. of the world. <laughs> 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 Keep recording, keep recording. Eli cheated. I did cheat. <gasps> We're down at page 25 where I cheated to get here earlier. Cheater. You're not allowed to start scrolling until Noah's done. I know you're not. You have to wait until Noah's done. We race down to the bottom of, <laughs> of where the start of the ads are. How dare you? It's episode 454. <laughs> <laughs> the wall would be covered in scratch marks. You know? Yeah, right, right. I've gone into the settings of my mouse scroll to speed it up. Just <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, Interstitial One. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.